Wixie friends. My name is Carolyn Daly, and I am a team member um, with the Tech for Learning team. And um, today I get to spend the next 30-ish minutes with you all talking about how you can assess student learning using lots of the different assessment tools in Wixie. And so without further ado, I like to start with the why behind um, everything that I present on. And um, I came across a couple different things that I thought were, were kind of very relevant to the why. And the first being something from Grant Wiggins. If you guys are familiar with um, him, he's a great author um, of Understanding by Design. But he wrote, learners need endless feedback more than they need endless teaching. And I was like, yes, exactly. Um, I'm one of those that's always trying to improve. And so it's one of those things where I know that if I am not getting that constructive feedback and asking the, the right questions and whatnot, it's a stagnation completely. And so um, I'm all about people kind of chiming in. And that's why when we started, I said, hey, you know, Danny, or if any of you have any comments, um, please chime in and, and ask the questions because that's how we grow. And um, the other thing that I loved was the analogy about kind of the formative assessment is, you know, when the cook is tasting the soup, right, or the teacher, right, tasting the soup versus the summative assessment is when the guest or the, the student is actually tasting the soup. And so I really like that, that analogy. And what's wonderful about Wixie is Wixie has the feedback tool. So you can do that just in time feedback with the kiddos. And it also has lots of different ways to do a very casual formative assessment with the kids along the way, as well as kind of um, that longer summative assessment towards the end of the project. So this presentation is all about kind of showcasing some of the different um, tools and rubrics that we have to support all of those. So this is my roadmap for today's presentation. And I actually created a rubric to actually assess my own assessment session. <laughs> so this was the checklist out of that. And I thought might be kind of fun for you all to assess me at the end. Um, so if I am able to, you know, follow my road plan, I'm hoping Danielle, I made this a team project, can go back in and she can put little green checks by all of those different um, things. So um, as you can see, I want to make sure that I share where all of the pre-made templates um, exist for the assessments and then share how you can make tweaks to those assessments and um, attach them to any Wixie project. And then we'll go ahead and we'll go in from the beginner, just how do you create a rubric from scratch? And then what I'd like to do as we kind of finish up is to kind of walk you through the classroom scenario. Okay, so now you've made your rubric and here is the template that you wanna use. So how do you a, connect those two pieces and assign it out to the student. And then once the student is working on that template, when they're done, what does that look like? How do you actually use that rubric, assess it, and have the kids know exactly what they are being assessed upon? Because as we all know, we need to know where we're headed, right? If we're going to have success, we need to absolutely know that checklist. So I wanted to definitely um, start with this, and like I said, we'll we'll end up here um, with this checklist. But let's go ahead and we'll start with the templates, okay? And since all of you are Wixie users, I know you're very familiar with this template folder, um, but did you know that all of the templates in Wixie, the thousands of them, almost every single one of them has a an assessment attached to it? Did you know that? If you didn't know that, let me go ahead and just show you very quickly. We'll just grab one of my um, favorite ones, which is this um, character coat of arms. And to see, you know, you can see here that it's got all the instructions to the right and you're thinking, okay, well, where's the assessment? It's underneath that just glorious little file. And you just go down to assessment and voila, there's the assessment that is attached. So again, to look at any template and see what the assessment is. It's just a matter of opening it up and going file and assessment, okay? Now, our team has done a fantastic job of going in and linking all of the different assessments that we've created to, um, to those templates. And Lindy Kolk is on this call right now, and thank you to her. Um, almost 
all of those have um, a template attached. If you find one that doesn't, let us know because we will go in and we will attach one. Um, but just so you can see, there's an entire folder called assessments. And this is where all of the ones that we have created reside. Okay, so as I said, nearly every one of the templates has some form of an assessment. It could be something as simple as, you know, you did it or you didn't do it, okay? Um, and we use those little, you know, three buttons, okay, you finished the activity and did the work right or you just need to go back. Um, and so again, it might have one of these very simple assessments, but as you can see, we also have leveled the different assessments that we have. And so, you know, just to kind of show you some of the different primary ones that we have, these are more sort of project specific. Welcome, Ginny. Um, so I know when I taught first and second grade, I mean, haikus, that was something that we all did and how great to be able to have something that's very specific towards that format. So again, a teacher could go in and could print this out ahead of time and get it, give it to the kiddos, or as we'll, sh as I'll show you, you can attach that and then click, click, click and grade it right within Wixie. So again, lots of different assessments in the primary level. Even in middle school, for those of you that teach kiddos that um, are a little bit older, this, there's a great one on teamwork. So it's not just about assessing for the content. It's also about things like behavior, you know, how, how, well, how organized are the kiddos when they're doing their project work. And then last but not least, the elementary folder. And this is probably where most of you will head to. Um, and as you can see, we've got probably 20-ish in, in each of these different levels. Um, and they're for lots of different things. And the, the date here, as you can see, like this was five days ago, Lenny did this one, it's fantastic. Um, and so we're adding, just like our regular templates, we're adding things all the time to these. So just to kind of open one of these up and let you kind of see the, the actual rubric maker. Um, this is the part where you go, oh, wow, okay. Um, we've got all of these different topics and components, and as you can see, criteria boxes for each of them. The wonderful thing is you can customize any of the templates that are in Wixie. And so don't get too tripped up on, okay, well, wait a minute, I, you know, I, I can't do anything here. It's just a matter of clicking the customize button on the right, and then this will actually make a copy of it. So it's not gonna mess up the original. You'll have a copy of it in your folder. And then at this point, you can go in and say, okay, you know, what, what level do I want? And when I say what level, I mean, these are all, our whole database of um, assessment verbiage is all written at these various levels. So if you, if you teach first grade, you're gonna wanna make sure that you choose primary, right? And it basically takes the, the words and, you know, takes those polysyllabic words and, you know, makes them so they're very decodable, right? So you choose your level. I'm just going to keep this at elementary, but you can change the, the title of it. So let's say I want this to be on multiplication. Um, okay, so change the title of it, make it so it's a little bit more specific to what it is that you're assessing. And anything in any of these criteria boxes is modifiable. So if you wanted it to be just, you know, it includes, you know, a page with, okay, all of that can be changed. You can even go into the checklist here and change it. One nice thing is that you have the ability to also go in and change the topic. So let's say we want to change that to design and the component. Okay, so everything can be modified. As you can see, it then will spit out all of the different components for that. Okay, so again, everything can be changed in this. If you decide, you know what, I don't want design, I'm having them write a multiplication problem that doesn't make any sense, the button up here kind of looks like an undo. It is actually a revert button. So if you click on that, it actually goes back to where we started, okay? So it doesn't go back to the last thing that you did. It's, again, back to the original um, word problem. As you can see, it took out multiplication in the title. Um, so again, any of the rubrics that we have, you can go in and quickly customize it. 
And then when you're finished, you just click on the finish button, okay? And you think, okay, well, where did that go? Guess we're in the cloud, but <laughs> poof, right? They all go in the My Assessments folder area. So anything that you create will be in it and will by default go into that My Assessment spot. Okay, so there's our multiplication word problem. And at that point, you can go in and you can say, okay, I want to link this to a Wixie project and, or I want to delete it, I want to start over. So you can see some of the different applications, um, things that you can do with that particular uh, rubric, okay? Any questions about accessing the, the pre-made ones or just making some, some customizations to them? this point. Oh, are you guys ready to see the actual rubric maker from the from the beginning, how to create your own? Awesome. Okay. So like creating anything in Wixie, it's that big new button and you just go down to assessment. Okay. And this is where the magic starts. Here's the rubric maker. And um, gosh, when I started with Tech for Learning 20 years ago, um, Ruby Star was um, a resource that was really, really popular. Does that, yeah, I see some head buds. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I mean, you can change anything, it's all leveled, and then poof, you know, come into Tech for Learning. And I mean, this is basically Ruby Star on steroids. <laughs> and the fact that you can make your own, save it, print it out, assign it to links, it just makes it just so cool. So, all right, so let's let's give this a, a context here. I am huge in having people use Wixie to teach content that they have learned from teachers. And so I love the idea of a good how-to video. And now with, oh, hot, or a hot video, how-to video. Okay, so we're gonna give this a context. And we're going to choose a topic, which, of course, I'm going to say we got to judge on some content, right? And some compo the component, we're going to say um, the, let's do the order, especially for a how-to, okay? And as you can see, once I select that, it automatically will provide all of the text in the different fields, okay? And I can add a row and go back in here and let's say we want to, of course, for how to, we're doing writing, right? So we'll choose a component and we'll say organization. So again, you can see how easy, and then you can choose how many points. And so you can weight certain things more or less depending on um, your needs. We'll do one more and we'll choose maybe design. Okay, so, once, once you have all of the different pieces, just know, just like before when we were customizing it, you can go back up here and decide, you know what, if you want a four, three, two, one rubric scale, you can change those to numbers. Hi, Denise. Um, anything can be modified here. So any changes? Does anybody have any input before we click on finished? All good? Okay. So again, I started from scratch, gave it a title, chose my level, and now I'm going to go ahead and click finished. And it is going into that My Assessments folder where everything resides that either you customize from Tech for Learning's rubrics that come with the program or the ones you start from scratch. Okay. All right. Remember how I said that um, kind of towards the end, I wanted to go and start kind of a classroom scenario. So now we have created a how-to assessment, okay? So now we're gonna go and we're gonna figure out, all right, what is the template or the project? In this case, I'm just gonna use one of the templates. And this is my um, opportunity to show off some of the awesome things that Lindy, who again is on this call, um, <laughs> creates all the time that you may not know about, okay? So um, if you go into language arts, into writing, there is a story starters folder. Have any of you seen this folder? It's pretty awesome and fantastic for having your kids create, of course, digital stories, but great for how to's. Okay. So I am going to create a scenario where my second grade students are going to be tasked with creating a grammar tutorial. Okay. It's going to be a how to on plural. 
So I have a couple here to choose from. I'm going to choose this step by step. And just again, click on those little buttons. And I'm going to copy this one to my projects area. Okay. And now when it's in my projects area, I'm going to make some tweaks to it. All right. We're going to call this because again, I'm creating a scenario where I want my kiddos to use that fabulous little assessment that we all created and um, do some work um, on it so, I, so we can assess it together as a team. Okay, and I'm gonna go into the instructions area and I'm gonna say, um, uh, let's see, type, type um, examples of how plural words change when there is a, um, let's see, C-H, S-H, I'm just doing this really quick, or S, Y, or S. Okay, and I can copy and paste these onto all of the different pages of that tutorial. I can also, as you all know, record my voice, okay? So again, I'm now just creating the scenario where I am setting up my template for the kiddos that's going to go with my how-to assessment. And I am finished with that. So I'm gonna go back here. And um, now I, what I wanna do is I want to actually link up my assessment that I created to this particular template, okay? If I go to file, remember in the beginning, I said if you click on any template that we have and you go file assessment, it's gonna pop up with an assessment, right? Because we have assigned, we have, match those all together. Well, again, this one already has one, as you can see, okay? But it's wonderful because I can remove it and I can add my own, okay? So if you look at a template and you go, you know what, I wanna tweak it, I wanna add my own, easy to do. Just simply click remove, and then you can see you have these different options here, okay? So now I'm gonna go back out to my assessments, which is where, again, anything that you create will reside and we're gonna to go to my how-to video, okay? And save, all right? So now you can see my how-to is now attached to my template, right? Good, so now I'm gonna go back home because that's where we go, right? This is where all the magic happens when we're ready to assign it to the kiddo, okay? All right, so back to those three little dots and Again, just to reemphasize, Wixie plays so well with so many different learning management systems. So if I wanted to share that with Seesaw or Schoolology or Google Classroom, I would go down here and I would click share. I'm gonna assign this right into Wixie, okay? So I'm gonna use the assign link here. And let's go ahead and since it's, this would be more like a second grade-ish kind of thing, we'll go ahead and we'll assign it to all the students and click save. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna log in as one of these um, students. All right. We hope I type that. No, I knew I didn't type that correctly. All right, here we go. All right, so as you can see, here it is. And I'm gonna open it up. And now this is where Aiden can go in and he can type in whatever he wants to the project, you know, so box changes to boxes, let's say, okay? He does all of his different things on his project. He Maybe he brings in some images. You guys get the gist, okay? So he's working on his project, right? When he's done, you know, he logs out and let's go back and as the teacher now, let's go in and check out how Aiden did, okay? And as most of you know, it's all about heading to where? The students area, yep. So I'm gonna go check out all the work that my kiddos have done in second grade on their how-tos, okay? So here is Aiden's project. And when we started, we were talking about how important feedback is, and it's especially if it's just-in-time feedback. And since we're, we're doing 
Um, and great question. He doesn't have to submit it; just automatically saves right right into the cloud. Um, so you can see, like I just literally clicked on students. Boom! There's his work, and now we can look at it. I mean, I can click on anybody else in my second grade class and see all of their work as they do it. Okay, great question. Okay. So once I click on this project, because this is the one that I want to assess, you can see that there's um, an area here where I can click on this plus sign and I can leave feedback, okay? So if Aiden ha it has not completed this, so he hasn't moved this slider to say, hey, teacher, I'm done with it, it's ready to be graded, then I can go in and say, hey, remember to check your sight words or um, you know, whatever little kind of nudges that I can do. And as Aiden is working on this project, he will see every piece of feedback that I have written and he can also respond back and ask questions to me as well. Okay. And that all shows up um, in the little comment area in Wixie. So again, I can leave feedback and then the grade air, the grade tab, this is where now, as the teacher, you can look at the project and say, okay, well, how did, how did Aiden do? Okay, he did, you know, one page in this case. So maybe it's almost there, his writing, eh, beginning it, we're not that clear. And as you can see, what's happening is Wixie is actually calculating a score based on what I'm clicking in the criteria. Isn't that awesome? So... There's nothing that you have to do other than, of course, go in, look at the project and then say, OK, well, this is this is where, you know, Aiden is at at this point. OK, um, any questions about that process? I know I went through that kind of quickly, but does that give you guys a good good idea? OK, awesome. Anything to 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 add, Danny, before we go back to the, the checklist part? Um, one other thing too, I was talking to uh, Danielle about this before, is in feedback you can, if you install the emoji, what the emoji keyboard, right, you can add little emoji symbols, which kids will love, okay? So so if you have primary kiddos, you can put in like a little smiley face or, you know, a little, right, if they're not quite there yet. So I love that you can add the little, the, the emojis. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation and let's go to that checklist page again. So I mentioned that I basically created a rubric for my presentation today. And this is the checklist piece of that assessment, okay? Um, before I have you and Danielle grade me though, if I've covered these things, um, I want to show you where in your settings you would go to actually have it set. So if you have young students or you want it to not show rubrics, but to show like a checklist, like you're looking at right now, you can do that. And it actually will show for all of your students. And Danny, while I'm going into settings and showing them, will you come off um, your um, mute and share the story that you shared with me today? That I love that about the teacher and what, um, what she was doing with the checklist and printing out. Yeah. Um, so as Karen Wixie, uh, we've had a rubric for a long, long time, um, even before it was in Wixie. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things that made me fall in love with Tech for Learning 20 years ago um, when I was still a technology coach. I didn't give my students the rubric, though. I gave them the a set the checklist because they learned really fast how to read the rubric and they would do the lowest thing they needed to do to score. Um, to still pass my eighth graders. So I was talking about that. I know we were in Chicago and I'm pretty sure it was at ISTE and I'm pretty sure it was with Olga. Um, but what Olga does is for her culminating projects, she has to print the rubric and you can print the rubric right there in Wixie. So she prints that out and she provides them that copy, but attached to the project, because more than likely they're gonna lose that printed out copy anyway, um, is the, only the checklist. And she leaves the checklist where it's viewed until the day the project is turned in. And then she changes her settings back to the assessment piece. And that way she has the full rubric. 
um, because her students like mine were also not uh, doing everything they needed to on the rubric. They'd say, oh, five sentences get me that score, but if I only do three, I still pass. Let's just do three. So, um, so yeah, she also did. I'm pretty sure it was Olga. I know we were in Chicago having the conversation a few years ago, but you could easily switch it over to checklists. Mm -hmm. That way the students don't get too, uh, too smart on doing the minimal to pass. And um, you can still print the rubric if you need to for your own purposes. And I mean, I'm a big chess checklist gal. Like I literally every day I have like my whole task list and I like to check it off. I mean, I even did it for this presentation. So um, I like that we have options. And as you all know with Wixie, there are so many different options that you have to, to be able to assess your kiddos. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I shared that if you just go into your settings area, which is where I went, you can and scroll down to assessment and you can also use the default. So if you know you're, you know, a first grade teacher, you probably want to just set that to primary. And again, every time you make a rubric, it's going to be set to that, um, that level. Okay. Um, all right. So now is the time to did Carolyn <laughs> cover all of those different things. So Danny gets to, I, I'm, and I made um, Danielle a part of this team project. And another thing that I wanted to address while Danny is going in and, and, and grading me, and you guys can help her. What? Yes, question? Oh. I forgot I was on silent. The teamwork, is that what you're about to show them? The teamwork? Well, no, I was just going to have you do the little checks, but I also wanted to say that you can create teams and have kids come in and um, as, as a teacher, if you actually add yourself as a team member to their project, you can go in and help them and provide that just in time feedback. So that's a great, very innovative way to help kiddos as well is actually using the team feature, which is what I did here with Danny. All right. So, okay. And again, one cool thing, if you if you don't know, um, you know, the, basically I just took that check and I cloned it. So this is kind of a fun little thing. So again, if you're doing a whole group thing and you want to grab a checklist and say, okay, did we cover this? Did we cover that? And um, it's as easy as literally dragging a symbol on and going into edit properties clone. And there you have it um, cloned. So again, that that edit button is um, is your friend. So again, we go into properties, you can just go into clone and then do the same same kind of thing. Okay, um, well, look at that, woo woo, really check, 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 I like it. Um, okay, so any, so the other thing um, before we wrap up, because I know we're almost at 4.30, is as you all know with Tech for Learning, we have a plethora of support resources. We've got um, built into Wixi all kinds of step-by-steps um, right underneath the, the help area on assessment. You also, and I can, will certainly email this to you, there's a create an assessment in Wixi um, short video. So exactly what I did, but maybe two or three minutes and you can kind of go back and and rewatch that, as well as how to attach an assessment to a Wixi project. Again, it's all about the, the little snowmen, the three dots, right? Um, those are your friends here. That's where you, you know. Um, and I included um, my my contact and Danielle's. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions um, that you have via email or phone or whatnot. And any questions um, right now too. I don't know, Dan, if you want to stop recording and then we can answer some questions sure. that folks may have. Stop. Thank you all. Don't leave. Everybody else, thank you. 